Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, as always, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast, a broadcast that's a live Bible question answer program where you, the radio audience, at any point in time, have the opportunity afforded to you. Pick up your phones, dial 281 837 2222 if you have any Bible questions. Comments you like to make, and we'll give you book, chapter, verse for all your Bible questions, and listen to your comments as well. God judges on how we speak, think, and act. God judges on how we think, speak, and act. From Deuteronomy 29, verse 10, the Bible says, You stand this day, all you, before the Lord your God, your captains of your tribes, your elders, your officers, with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and the strangers that's in thy camp. From the hewer of the wood unto the drawer of thy water, that thou shouldest enter into the covenant with the Lord thy God and into his oath, which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day, that he may establish thee to today for a people unto himself, and that he may be unto thee a God, as he had said unto thee, and as he had sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that standeth here with us this day before the Lord our God, and also with him that is not here with us this day. For you know how we have dwelt in the land of Egypt, and how we came through the nations which you passed by, and you have seen their abominations, and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were among them, lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe, whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations, lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. And it come to pass, when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of my heart to add drunkenness to thirst. The Lord will not spare him, but then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man. And all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him. And the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. And the Lord shall separate him under evil out of all the tribes of Israel. According to all the curses of the covenant that are written in the book of the law. I've read Deuteronomy 29, 10 through verse 21. Our subject matter is God judges on how we speak, think, and act. Then at this time, I'll turn it to Brother Stephen Ozan, who will lay the foundation. Brother Ozan. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Javier. Welcome, audience. Uh, I was going to say a few things. These men are much more qualified, and they're doing an excellent job. I want to just draw your attention, uh, audience and saints alike, to how you think. Uh, most of the time, we can catch action. Uh, we can catch words. But how you think, a lot of people get away in their minds with sin, how you think. You you have put God in a box. You, you try to tell us we put God in a box. You put him in a box by making yourselves think that you have a power to bless yourself. Now, I just want to focus on this to start off with Deuteronomy 29. And then listen to what he says here. Verse 18. Lest thou should, Deuteronomy 29, 18. Lest thou should be among you man or woman. A lot of people, uh, and I was naive to this fact, they don't think that women are going to go to hell. For some reason, you know, this thing, especially old women, uh, nice women, uh, you know, kind women. But the idea is that there are many people that are nice, kind, and old in the Muslim belief system, which totally denies Christ as God's son. Uh, the Buddhists. The Hindus, a lot of nice, sweet old women. But it says woman, or family, or tribe. It could be a whole family, a whole tribe, whose heart turned away this day from the Lord our God, to go and serve the gods of these nations. Lest thou should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. And it come to pass, verse 19, when he heareth the words of this curse. Now that's the same one woman, man, family, tribe, that he blessed himself in his heart. See, he doesn't say just bless himself in the heart. Saying, it's in his heart. I shall have peace. Though I walk in the madness of my heart to add drunkenness to thirst. So, I, I'm thirsty, but I want to add drunkenness to it. I thirst for sin, 
But I want to add drunkenness. I want to get sloppy with the sin. The Lord will not spare him. You know, one of the things I found out about Bible readers is that Bible readers are not necessarily Bible believers. And so, but the anger of the Lord then in his jealousy shall smoke against that man. And all curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him. And the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. Now see, you interpret that as meaning well, all the things have to happen to him. Now you understand, the curse of whatever's written, each action that cursed is going to fall upon him. It doesn't matter what happens to him. You're thinking, well, he's going to get burnt, then he's going to get drowned. No, no, no. The degradation, the hatefulness of the curse, of all the different curses, the Lord's going to be angry like that. All of them, I want, I want all of it on you. Whatever each curse brings, death is what it is. Do you understand what it's saying? That's what's going to happen to you. The curses to blot out your name from under heaven. And the Lord shall separate him unto evil out of all the tribes of Israel, according to all the curses of the covenant that are written in this book of the law. So the Bible talks about though hand joined in hand, the guilty will not go unpunished. See, you can be right next to a righteous person. You can be an embracing your spouse, and they may be righteous and you are not. And, and the curse hits you. And the activity that takes place from then on, you may consider Christian suffering, but the Lord is paying you back for your wickedness. Look at Matthew chapter 9. God, I want to deal with the heart issue, reads the thoughts of your hearts, just like Jesus Christ did also. Uh, look at Matthew 9, 1, and he entered, Matthew 9, 1, and he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. Matthew 9, 2, and behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the sick of the palsy, The son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within himself, Notice, this in himself. So you got several of them thinking the same thing. This man blasphemy. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, did y'all see that? Said, Wherefore think ye evil in your heart? Now let's stop. They hear a guy say, that's flesh and blood, has a reputation that he was a kid at one time and he's walked around, nice grown, carpenter, carpenter's son. And what happened? They say, okay, well, this guy say, son, your sins are forgiven. So they just say blasphemy. Now you may think, well, they didn't know, brother Ozan. See, that's the problem you don't understand. They know what he said and his words identify him as the son of God. You know what we're saying. And our words identify us as servants of God. So you blaspheme in your heart. And you don't think, listen on the radio, you're sitting there and you go, going, oh, Zan, crazy. See, the Lord heard that. But see, you're blaspheming what God told me to say. This is not my thought. And so Jesus said, you think evil in your heart. You have to understand, audience, when you speak against a servant of God that's spoken truth, you think evil in your heart. That's what you're doing. Yeah. This isn't their word. They have no other words to repeat other than this. When they criticized Amos and told him, go back to Judah. This is the king's house. The ten tribes belong to him. Amos had to send a message to the king, let him know, your wife going to become a prostitute in the street. A no, that's like Joe Biden's wife. God forbid it should happen. She'll become a prostitute, a common prostitute in the street. Why did he say that? Because you spoke against what God sent me to do. Some of you are very bold in the world and that listen to us. You're bold. You think it. And God heard it. Look what he says. For what is easy to say? Thy sins be forgiven? I say arise and walk. He said if I would have said arise and walk, they would have said and he said it's the same thing. In his case, he has sins. When he was a blind man, he isn't blind because of his sin. He's just born blind. But in this guy's case, he said, you know, I'm going to heal you, but I also want to remove your sins from you. The blind man he healed does have sin. But the difference is it wasn't because of his sin. He's blind. So Christ was about 
healing and removing sin, which you can't do in the Catholic Church with your hospital. You can't remove sins. You can't remove sins. Those of you in the Church of Christ that want to build a hospital, you can't remove sins by removing a person's gallbladder or something. You can't, you can't remove sin like that. So Christ, when he healed, he removed sin. Sure, okay, through the process of healing, I'm healing them spiritually. And that's why it says, what's easy for me to say? Son, your sins are forgiven. Or son, take up your bed and walk. But they, that you may know that the Son of God, verse 6, have power on earth to forgive sins. Then said he to the sick of the palsy, arise, sick of thy bed, and go unto thine house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power to men. See, this is the idea. They glorified God. The scribes, the wicked men, they blasphemed God in the heart. But these people said from the mouth. God's going for. Well, someone said, well, you know, if I just don't say nothing, they don't know what I'm thinking. Don't worry about what we know. Be assured God knows. And he will judge you for your thoughts. You are going to have to accept he will judge you for your thoughts. If you don't accept that, you're going to fall. Look at one more, Matthew 5. I'm going to prove to you he judges you from your heart. Now you've got to understand verse 33. Again, you have heard, Matthew 5, 33, that it had been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's strong, nor by earth, but it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, neither shalt thou forswear by thy head, because thou canst not make one half black or white. But let your communication be yea, yea, and nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these coming of evil. So what do we say? What you think and what you say. You see, different. now this person says something they shouldn't because it should be yea and nay. And not just only out of the mouth, but we've proven also what is in your heart. You got to ask yourself, audience, do you believe these things? Do you actually accept this? How about sexual sins of the heart? You've been thinking about the girl next door. You're watching a movie with your wife and you're wishing, I wish I was that guy in bed with that lady. Now, let's see what's God going to do to you. It's my final thought. Matthew 5 and verse number 27. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. I say unto you, and whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her had committed adultery with her already in his heart. I wonder what the weak need false teachers in the church of Christ would do with the guy who confesses, you know, I thought about sleeping with the lady next door. Does he have to go and get uh, repentance from them or divorce? How will they make him divorce that thought? You know, see, he can tell a guy he got to go get a divorce or marry another lady. Well, what if he's thinking about the lady in his heart? He feels he's... With her already, he sleeps with her in his mind in bed at night. He's already engaged in what the Lord says, the same type of adultery. So what would these weak need teachers in the church of Christ do with this guy? You wouldn't even know how to counsel that guy. You would say something foolish like, oh, that's all right, because it was just in your mind. It's not all right. He's going to die lost for it. What would you say? What is it, Remy? What will he give back? What will he go redo? The foolish heart that you have will be the reason you'll die lost. Remember, audience, the things you think, Say and the actions you do. Mm -hmm. God will judge those. Uh, if you have questions, please call 281 837 2222. Thank you, Brother Jose. Thank you, Wonderful brother. foundation on the subject matter. I want to go to Hebrews chapter 4 if we could. And I want to read verse number 12 and 13. And while you turn there, make sure you understand, radio audience, that God's word will not come back void, it will do exactly what it's designed to do. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, the Hebrew writer says, For the word of God is quick. That word there, it's alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, now get this, and, is, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner, get this, of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. 
Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. And so the idea Brother Ozan has so wonderfully expounded on to us this afternoon is it doesn't have to come out in your physical actions alone uh, for it to be sin to God. As he's shown, Jesus judged the hearts, the thoughts, the intent. And that's what God's word is designed to do, uh, radio listen, and, 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 and members of the body of Christ. See, when you hear God's word, as we propagate it, anybody, any good Bible teacher, preacher propagates God's word, it does what it's designed to do. And it, and it, and it does two things. It either gives the person that hear it the opportunity to accept it and repent if they've got sin and change and, and live right and do right, or it calls them like Pharaoh in the Old Testament to hear it and to reject it and to do what they want to do and then suffer the consequences. But even Moses going to Pharaoh, God's word, Moses didn't waste his time. I want you to make sure you understand that going to Pharaoh. It was not a waste of time. Because God's word did exactly what it was designed to do when people hear it. You either receive it, you either be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, or you are like Pharaoh, you get upset, you get mad, you do your own thing, and you fight against God, and you always lose. Now, I'm going to tell you something about our brethren in the church. See, this is why, even in the church of Christ, this is why, I'm going to tell you why. We now see women standing up in the Church of Christ, uh, leading songs. The Orpheus Haywoods. Yeah, I'm not. I'm gonna keep talking about it until I die if I can. Orpheus Amen. Haywood, uh, and 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 the, and the Richard Barclays, and you other Church of Christ with instruments. You know why? You know why they're able to get away with it in those congregations uh, where they labor is because guess what? It was already in some of the folk hearts. Amen. You know that? They've heard it all. The, most of you men in the church at the time, you know, we're not to use instruments. You're not instruments in work, but they hid it in their heart. And all the time they said, well, I really don't see a problem with it. They were just waiting for somebody bold enough and somebody who had a, a, a name that was somehow renowned as it relates to the world who had the guts to stand up and say that it's okay to fight against God. They just needed a leader who would lead them back into Egypt and Orpheus and other and Tim Daniels. These are men who, uh, who had the courage uh, to stand up and fight against God. But un unfortunately, at the end of the day, there is a second coming, and they will stand before Jesus and all of you who have been holding in your heart uh, the whole time that now is, 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 is open and naked in your sin before God. Just know that there's going to come a day where you will give an account. You Zoom worshipers, just know you continue to do it, just know there is going to come a day where you're going to give an account before God because you're holding in your heart that it's okay. And Amen. so now it's shown in how you're living and how and your lifestyle. Now remember, Psalm chapter 14, before I talk to Javier, Psalm chapter 14 and verse number 1, I want you to see this, Psalms 14 and verse number 1. See, let me tell you something. Your actions show whether or not you believe in God or not, you know, and what you and I do. It don't have to necessarily come out. Psalms 14 and 1 said, The fool had said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. And there is none, he says, that do it good. Okay? And so you notice that. They're saying in their heart that there is no God. They're doing what they want to do. How they want to do it. And their actions um, and the, how they live is professing that they don't believe that there's a God that's going to come back and judge them one day. Go over to Psalm chapter 10. Go back to Psalms 10 with me. Now, Psalm chapter 10 and verse 1, this is a psalm where the psalmist understand that God hears and God acts. I want to make sure you understand that. God hears exactly what you're saying, even in your heart, and he also are judging your actions. In Psalms 10, 1, the Bible says, Why standest thou far off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. You see that? In their heart. He said, let them be taken in these wicked devices. For the wicked boasted of his heart's desire, and get this, and blessed the covetous whom the Lord abhorred. Isn't that something? They're blessing the people that are against the things that God hates. And notice it. They're boasting about it. They're doing their heart's desire. The Orpheus Haywoods, the Tim Daniels are doing things that contradict the word of God. They can show you no scripture 
where women are allowed to stand up and to be leading in the song service. They can show you no scriptures that say that you and I should be sounding like instruments in the Lord's service. You know, I want to encourage those of you, I want you to do this. Brother Ozan preached a, a powerful lesson this morning over at the Will Clayton Church of Christ. A powerful message. And this message was actually put up on, on YouTube. And I want to encourage those of you who have uh, access to YouTube to go back and listen to this message. Why didn't people believe in Jesus' teaching? Because I'm going to tell you, the same exact foolishness that we're seeing amongst the Barclays, Richard Barclay, Tim Daniels and the Orpheus Haywood today, they fall in this category of why people don't believe in the teaching of Jesus. Amen. These guys are not capable to teach. They want to be a friend of the world. Amen. And this is why they've implemented the false worship that we see today. But nonetheless, verse 4 or Psalms 10 says this, The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. And so they are doing things in their thoughts because they have no respect for God. But just know this, God will judge what's in your heart. He's going to judge the things that you and I speak, and he will judge our actions also. Because the things you're doing in your actions really are an expression of what's in your heart anyway. 281-837-2222 is the number of the call. If anybody have any Bible or qu questions or comments at this time, Brother Javier Frias. Amen. God bless you, Brother Henry, and Amen. Brother Hosanna as well. Amen. Well said, well said. You know, when it comes to the scriptures, the Bible says, Cursed be the man that trusted a man and make it flesh his arm or make it flesh his strength. That's in Jeremiah. But even Jesus, when Jesus was on earth, audience, the Bible says in verse 24, Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew, the Bible says, all men. Now, the word commit is described as to trust. He did not trust men because he knew what was in man. He knew what was in man. Why would you rather trust a man over God? Why would you rather seek honor from men than from God? It says, verse 25, And needed not any that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. The Bible tells us of the sins that men do. And if men are not going and attending on the first day of the week, as Hebrews 10, 24 to 26 says, it says that you sin willfully when you forsake the assembly. Look at Jeremiah chapter 6. Looking at verse 19, uh, this prophet says, Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. Now, there was another place where he was instructing that Egypt go down to Jerusalem. But the world will be judged. The saints will be judged first. It says in Peter, judgment must begin at the house of God. If the world doesn't obey the gospel... If the world doesn't obey, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, what's going to happen to you if you don't obey the gospel? Amen. And if you obey the gospel or not keeping God's commandment, as Brother Henry's mentioning, if you're forsaking the assembly, what's going to happen to you? Do you think worship, Zoom as what you call it, do you think that's real worship? Do you think that's uh, evil before God's eyesight? Well, how would you define that? Is that real worship? Is that true worshipers? As John 4 describes, the true worshipers shall worship me in spirit and in truth. Are you guys in the same location? Or is God seeing the deceitfulness that's being done here under the sun? And Ezekiel, let's look at Ezekiel chapter uh, 14, look at that verse 7. Everyone of the house of Israel, or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separate himself from me, and setteth up his idols in his heart, put the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and come unto a prophet to inquire of him, Concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. I, I will set my face against that man and will make him a sign and a proverb. I will cut him off from the midst of my people. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Audience, saints, the commandments of the God are not grievous. They're not difficult. God judges on what we speak, think, and act. Think, speak, and act. And... If your thoughts are going contrary to what we've been reading today, if your thoughts are agreeing, whether it be to fornication or drunkenness, as we read in Deuteronomy, as if you're covetous, if you're lying, if you're stealing, if you're cheating on your wife, cheating on your husband, if you're committing iniquity and you're outside of the body of Christ, understand that the Bible says, if you die in your sins, where am you, where am you cannot come. If you're in the body of Christ and you're doing the same, What's he going to do? He's going to send out his angels. 
He's going to take from his kingdom and pluck out all things that offend. In Psalms chapter 39, what did King David say in verse 23? Search me, O God, and know my heart, he says. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Is that a pray, prayer that we ask of God to lead me in the way everlasting? Or are we planning our sins for today because our cousin is coming over with a 24-pack of beer or our, our friend is coming over across the street. He's bringing a, a sack of cocaine to, uh, to get, see if we can smell the aroma of it, to see if it's uh, of good quality. What, what is your intention? Matthew chapter 12, looking at verse 24. This is when Jesus is speaking. He says in this verse, How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore is it lawful to do well on the Sabbath days? Then said he to a man, Stretch forth thine hand. He stretched it forth, and it was restored like the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him. Now, Jesus was able to, to recognize their thoughts when they wanted to kill him, what they thought about his doctrine. He knew what they were thinking. He knows what you're thinking even on this broadcast as we're speaking these words. And understand that he's recording what you're thinking concerning what we're speaking. Now, if we speak of false doctrine... The number, number to call is 281-837-2222. Again, 281-837-2222. This is the body of Christ, the church that Jesus built. He said, on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Meaning he was going to build something that did not exist. This is not the church of the wilderness as it talks about in the Old Testament. Because if Jesus in Matthew 16, 18 is saying that he was going to build his church... Why would he say that if it's already built in the wilderness? Amen. He was going to build a, a church. In Acts 20, 28, it says he purchased the church with his own blood. Audience, understand. In Luke chapter 6, Luke chapter 6, looking at verse 6, this is Jesus speaking again. Uh, it says, And it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught, and there was a man whose right hand was with it, and the scribes and Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an accusation against him, but he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand, rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? Jesus was going to do the work of God. It didn't matter if they wanted to kill him. If they didn't, didn't matter if they falsely accused him. He was going to continue to do the work of God. And so today on this broadcast, we're doing God's work. We're going to continue to do it. You may try to close down the doors. You can try. Uh, but the idea is that Jesus already said the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Amen. We're going to continue to do God's work until somebody kills us or Amen. we die of natural causes or it's our time uh, for us to leave this earth and be judged. But the church of Christ, remember, it's never going to be deleted. Man. By any man. Amen. By any man. So you can attempt, you can try, you can huff and puff, you can huff and you puff, but you're not going to be able to destroy Amen. what God and Christ has planned before the foundation of the world. Amen. Understand, audience, that Christ will come. He will look at our works. He will look at our thoughts and see if we're worthy or not to enter into the eternal kingdom. I'm going to call 21 through 7, 22, 22. Romans 16, 16. The Church of the Christ salutes you. I've read he said about the church of Christ that no one can remove the church. The Bible says it was prophesied it will never end, bro. This kingdom will never end. Amen. And they have to accept it. There's nothing they can say, nothing they can do to destroy. This is what we're dealing with. People don't think God is reading the thought. He said they think I can't hear them, think I can't see them. Yeah, and they don't realize the judgment is the same. God don't go, well, he just thought that. <laughs> he didn't do it, you know. But he, it's in God's mind. I know what you think Thank about it. So you're going to come to heaven when he sees you. You can go, well, no, good friend was serving. We walk in, we're going to tell Jesus. He really doesn't like us. Yeah. But we're going, and he never did anything, God. So you think, see, that's the problem. He knows what's in the heart. I remember how did you say all the time. The people say God knows my heart. That's a major problem.
problem in life. Yeah. Because right. we don't, but God knows no, why. That it. means what you say and what you think, they're equal to God. Like, right. You, you could have said it wouldn't have been right. no different. That's why Jesus right. said, why call you me law, law, and do not the things that I say. So now we go to actions. So now you, we talk about uh, thoughts. We talk about speech and action. So now I don't do what you say. Luke chapter 6, I call you Lord. I go to church, but I don't do what you say. You know? Seven, seven, five, two, yeah, the minute I leave the church, my mind immediately goes in the fast forward on what sin am I going to do. Right. You know, like you said, brother, there's people that go straight from the club, take a shower, you know, sleep a little bit, and go to church, you know. Mm-hmm. And they have no intention on not going to the club next week, you right. know. And, and it, because it's just a place to party, to look at women have dressed, you know, right. or men, whatever they choose, whatever right. sin they choose. And this is, this is their life. I live for this, and then they get angry with you mm-hmm. when you speak against it. But it's, it's the revelry, you know. Yeah. I'm not hurting nobody. You are. You're hurting your soul. Right. And the Lord says that's my property. Mm-hmm. You know, you're mine. You know, mm-hmm. all souls are mine. And He wants those souls returned like He sent them out, clean. He wants them returned. So mm-hmm. you know, the person has a choice to make. You know. Right. You know, before David, I'm good, you guys. Before David got on the, uh, before David was even got on the throne, remember what the Bible said? Yeah. God said, I chose a man after my own heart. Oh, wow. did, yeah. did God know he was going to commit adultery before yeah. he did it? Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Did God yeah. know he was going to murder a man before he, he did sure it? He sure did. He knew all that. Yes. But he still said, I found a man after my own heart. Uh-huh. See, God knew he yeah. would get it right. Yeah. That's, that's a different idea. And, that's, and that's, that's what some people want to try to do. I'm going to do what David did, but you're uh-huh. not going to be able to do what David did in sin. Amen. You know, no way. That's not what you're supposed to do.